I am with you still, Alleluia. You have laid your hand upon me, Alleluia. Too wonderful for me, this knowledge, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We just um, mentioned the word Alleluia, you know, that's associated with Easter. It's a great, a great cry of praise. It should be sung, but in normal times we would be singing it. But um, it's a great acclamation of praise to the risen Christ. And it's written in the Hebrew language, as is all men. Easter is not just one day, it's not just one feast. It goes on for seven weeks and it's considered to be one feast. Probably the longest, um, the longest liturgical season in the church's year. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass today, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you rose in glory from the grave. Lord have mercy. Dying, you destroyed our death. Christ have mercy. Rising, you restored our life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth, and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, 
not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. This day was made by the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. The stones which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Christians to the Paschal victim offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the lamb, and Christ, the undefiled, has sinners to his father reconciled. Death with life contended, combat strangely ended, life's own champion slain yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way. The tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. The angels there attesting, shroud with grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen. He goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead we know. <coughs> Victorious King, thy mercy show. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast then in the Lord. Alleluia. <coughs> The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb just as the sun was rising. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, there is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him, just as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord.
Eostre, which Easter is derived from, is a, an Anglo-Saxon word. It's, Eostre was the goddess of the spring. And the word Easter comes from it. The East also comes from it. East is over there and um, West is here. And we know what happens in the East. Well, the sun rises in the East. Of course, the sun doesn't move at all. So the earth actually comes around to meet it. But we always say in our popular language, the sun rises. And isn't it interesting to notice that the ladies who came to the tomb, Mary of Magdala was there, uh, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and Salome, whoever she was, they were there to anoint the body. And they came just as the sun was rising, it said in the, in the passage today. So just like the sun rising, and there was a beautiful sunrise this morning, if you were up that early, and what it did, it scattered the darkness of the night. And we were all happy to see the light again after the dark night. In the same way, Jesus is not the S-U-N, he is the S-O-N of God. And him rising from the dead scatters the darkness of the underworld, the darkness of sin and Death has its darkness as well, and we have known plenty about that in the last year with all those 126 or 27,000 people who lost their lives due to COVID. But there's light at the end of the tunnel as far as Christians are concerned because Christ has indeed overcome death. And we already said it in the opening prayer there, if you heard it, he, he has opened a way for us to eternal life. We know that the resurrection is a central theme of our faith and uh, like St. Paul says, if Christ is not risen, then all our teaching is in vain. And St. Augustine then in the fifth century put it beautifully when he said that we are Easter people. Isn't that what he said in one of his writings? We are Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. I think even from an irrational point of view, it's, it seems only right that we should live on after this life from a rational point of view. Because when you were coming in today, although it was when you're going to be going out, you'll see all the flowers, everything coming to life now. Nature itself is waking up after the death of winter and God is telling us something here. Uh, the scientists tell us, for instance, and even if you never read a Bible, the, the scientists say that nature itself doesn't know extinction. All it knows is transformation. Nothing in nature disappears without a trace. Now, if we're the high point of God's creation, this is where the rational bit comes in, then surely he wouldn't allow us to enter an eternity of nothingness. I, I re remember reading a story of St. Teresa. St. Teresa, the little flower. And she had terrible temptations towards the end of her life, not to believe in God. And the devil tempted her, she said that after her life on earth there would be nothing at all. And she knew that that wasn't from God. So, from a faith point of view, from a rational point of view, we know that there's life beyond the grave due to the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Christ. And even the nature itself proclaims that message. However, I think resurrection has to begin in the here and now if we're ever going to possess it eternally. We have to be, we're not just Easter people like St. Augustine said, but we're resurrection people. The question you could ask yourself today is, are you a resurrection person? What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, 
Do you bring joy to people or do you bring pain to most people you meet? Do you affirm people? Not just superficially, I don't mean that. Do you help them to see a better future? Do you uplift their lives or do you depress them? Well, if you are the, the former, then you are a, a resurrection person. How I think there are little resurrections along the road of life that we give one another before we hit the final one, which I spoke about earlier at the end of time. If you have your love rejected, you don't curl up and die. You don't give up your life. If you have your love rejected and you love again, that's kind of a resurrection. If you pick up the pieces of a broken life and many people's lives are broken and you begin again that's resurrection I think it was St. John Paul II who said that it's not the falling that we fall down on things during life all of us do but it's the staying on the ground he said is what you shouldn't do you should get up again and keep going don't give up that's resurrection and if you forgive somebody who is not worth forgiving, or maybe they are, but you might feel that, and you, every time a thought comes into you, their, your mind about them, it's a kind of a negative thought, and you forgive them, that is not just resurrection for you, but it's also resurrection for, for them. You don't want to keep them in bondage. So are you a resurrection person? I think that story of Lazarus in the tomb, do you remember, uh, it even mentioned it today about that big stone to the tomb where Jesus was. It was a huge stone there and they had to roll that away. Perhaps we need to roll the stone, the hardness of heart away before we can experience new life. And that's what it's about. You remember on the occasion of Lazarus, Jesus called Lazarus forth from the tomb. Come forth, he said. And he came out. And he was a new man. Now, I think if we're resurrection people and we want the message to take root in our heart, we have to leave certain tombs. And what's in a tomb? Nothing but death. And the tombs we probably have to leave are, what about our prejudices that are keeping us from really seeing the bigger scene? What about our fears, our phobias, our rationalizations, our categorizing people, our misjudging people, disenfranchi disenfranchising people? All that is all negative. That's not resurrection lingo. It's not resurrection language. Our, our biases, all that stuff has to go if we're going to be called forth from the tomb of our selfishness and live that new life of the resurrection which we heard in the second reading, Jesus wants us to live. We must live this new life, he said, and leave all our prejudices and biases behind. And love, of course, will be the order of the day. We know that at these moments along the road of life, really what they're doing is expressing a deeper longing which God has sown within the human heart. If it is an eternal seed, a yearning for that fullness of life and love, which he can only satisfy in the world to come. I think Pope Emeritus Benedict, who is still the Pope, still a Pope, but he's not the present reigning one. This is what he says. Faith in the resurrection of Jesus says that there is a future for every human being. And he also goes on to say, the cry for unending life, and that's what we all want, really. If you ask anyone what do they want in life, they'll say happiness, won't they? But the problem is, 
a lot of people are looking for happiness in the wrong places and they never get it the cry for unending life and happiness which is part of every person is indeed answered in the resurrection of Christ happy Easter to you all celebration of Easter may draw us closer to Christ our risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Peace was your son's parting gift to the apostles. Grant your peace to us and to people everywhere. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Let us pray for all over the past year who are suffering from the adverse effects of COVID-19. May they be restored to full health, whether in body or mind, and be given new hope this Easter. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious We pray for those who have lost faith in the afterlife. May the love they receive from others inspire them with renewed faith in God's love for them and his promise of eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all involved in the caring professions. May the Trojan work they've done in preserving life, particularly over the last year, be an enduring witness to the resurrection in everyday life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who died over the past year, especially from COVID-19 disease, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. May they share the glory of our risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And we pray to Mary, the mother of our risen Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause and pray for our own intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, God, our Father, who raised up Jesus from the dead, listen to our heartfelt prayers, both spoken and unspoken, and grant us what we ask for through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have seen bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, for through your goodness we have seen the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Alleluia. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia. Alleluia.
if we'll all stand. And I forgot that we had to read you our baptism of promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the past in history, we've been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our lives and observance is concluded, it has been you the promise of the holy baptism, by which we want to renounce Satan and his work, and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. Your answers are I do. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. In the name of Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and Holy Spirit, and we so must forgive us of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Mass tomorrow is here at 10.30 and it's for all the dead of St. Michael's Cemetery in Rivlin. After all, for those who don't know, we have a cemetery down there belonging to this parish with about 20,000 people buried there and we have a Mass every month for the happy repose of their souls. And Happy Easter to all of you and thanks for making it a happy time for all you've helped, especially over the past year in this um, present pandemic. Your true goodness has come to the fore and you exhibit all the virtues of what I was saying in the homily as a resurrection person. You brought help to people, even in little ways, not big ways, but these little resurrections for people, what it's all about. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favour, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. 
And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God. Thank you.